What we heard today from Ursula von der Leyen and an increased target of 45% uh, of renewables for the bloc's energy needs by 2030. Are these goals enough, do you think? Well, I think uh, what we have seen today is a very comprehensive plan made of both short-term and long-term measures that can really lead to a redesign of Europe energy map and ultimately to an acceleration of the European green transition. I think there is a clear understanding by the European Commission that renewable energy can be accelerated. And the reason why renewables can be accelerated, it is because one of the key bottlenecks in Europe for the deployment of renewable energy projects is bureaucracy. It might take up to nine years to get the permitting to build a wind farm in certain European countries, up to five years to have the permits to do a solar park. This is unacceptable. And therefore, simplification and fast tracking of these procedures is what we need today in Europe in order to fast track the deployment of renewable energy. It's not a problem of money, it's a problem of bureaucracy, which we need to quickly overcome also for energy security reasons today. Simone, can that happen quickly enough? There is a danger that Russian gas could be cut off tomorrow or next week or next month. And I just worry that maybe a number of European governments will be thinking very short term and they will try and spend money to deal with the more immediate crisis rather than thinking long term. So timing is one of the most tricky issues in dealing with the current energy crisis because Europe today needs to put in place both short-term measures to quickly get rid of Russian gas and accelerate the green transition medium long term. It is clear that renewables cannot alone provide a solution in the short term. In the short term, Europe needs to find alternative gas supplies, mainly LNG, mainly US LNG. It needs to increase the imports from alternative gas pipeline suppliers from Algeria to Azerbaijan to Norway. And it possibly also needs to consume in the short term more coal mm -hmm. in order to use the gas for the refilling of the storages we need out of the winter. So what we need is a very tricky balancing act between short-term options that needs to be a portfolio of options, namely starting with the reduction of energy demand, and mm -hmm. I will come to that, and longer term options related mainly to renewables. Energy okay. savings. Energy savings, if I may, is the short, is the low hanging fruit in this energy crisis. If Europe manages to save energy, to save oil and gas, we don't need to import that from Russia. So, so Simone, what do governments it, but need to do come, is to foster this. Simone, does that come in the form of um, industries and factories having to shut down on a rolling basis and for people to not turn on air conditioning in the, in the summer? Like, is that what we're looking at? So here we have different options. One is to reduce energy consumption voluntarily by citizens. So we need awareness campaigns to tell citizens that if they implement simple actions such as turning up by one degree the air conditioner at home or turning down by one degree the heating system at home in the winter, that can cut already gas and oil demand by 5% overall in Europe. Wow. If you reduce the, uh, the driving speed in the highway, etc., that's a reduction in the oil demand. So fostering public transportation is important. So all these measures need to be undertaken. But the point is that so far European governments have not been acting on this front. The reason is, is that this is politically not attractive to go there and say to people, try to consume as less as you can. Draghi tried to do that in Italy. And uh, well, the backfire he got was significant. So I think this is something we need to now do, because if you look yep. at the last six months, big countries have been spending 20, 30 billion euros to subsidize energy consumption. This is not going to be sustainable. Energy, redu energy reduction is now needed.